Welcome back to another animation analysis. And this time I'm taking a look at Pixar's teaser trailer for Luca. And right off the bat, it's super cute. I'm in love with it. I heard a pitch about this movie last year and I've been really looking forward to this. Very curious about the style and the look and just look at those colors. I know it's kind of like, this is not animation analysis when I talk about colors, but I love the feel right off the bat. Look at the little wobble. It's so cute. It's just so cute. The designs of the characters and the car. Look at that face. I love it. Really feels like a pushed style for Pixar in terms of just the cuteness and just overall character design. I feel like this is really pushing it. Look at those colors. So good. And then when you see that face, look at that. Love all this here. So great. Sorry, I'm looking right off the bat. If you watch my stuff, you know I'm looking at feet. <laughs> There's a little bit of toe squash right there. I love it. All those details. Look at those little guys. That whole thing here. Look at that frame. Love that design. Love that. And you got this character here. Let's play this in real time. Lack of motion blur. This kind of reminds me almost of Artman in terms of the mouth shapes and how they pop in and out out of those shapes. It's great to see though. I really, really like this. Love the look and style. The textures and the colors. Look at that. Look at that frame. Really cute. Love all of this. It's super cute. That frame alone is really great. Look at just posture. You can see nice hand poses. Just contrast of all the different characters. As always, if any students are watching this, you just pay attention to little offsets, even what the toes are doing. So nice though. I could look at this all day. I'm really, really liking those designs. That is so cute. Look at the little difference in walks. It really has almost a little bit of a stop motion artman feel when I look at all this here. Then you get a bit of a weight assignment. To me, it's always when I look at those trailers and if any students are watching, when they ask, again, like semesters are starting or actually they're in full swing here and students are asking what kind of shots could they do? And for me, it's always mechanic shots. You got to learn the basics and the principles and this could be a really good weight assignment. It doesn't have to be, you know, the character holding a box and lifting it. This could be something slightly more interesting where it's exactly that. Even this on cut here, you have that nice little change. You got a more complex turn. And that's your weight lift. But it's interesting the way they hold the hands. You could interlock with fingers. You can hold here on the forearm. And you got the nice pushy on the shoulders, which kind of tilts the head over. There's some really nice stuff here that you can absolutely repurpose for a more mechanic shot. Also, this stuff like that is really neat because then you can really push the silhouette when you have a background like that. Like, why not? Why not do a mechanic shot like this? You know, if you watch my channel, how much I love sets and props. This would be a really cute presentation. I also love the contrast of that little hop and then with the two feet together at the end here. It's cute. And of course, I'm looking at props of shoes, the sandals. You can see how much they delay and bloop, plop back. Love all of that. Just a really, really cute. I can't get over that look. Super, super cute. Also this here, when you have props in front of faces, you don't really want to hide the eyes. People are always looking at eyes. Nicely done here. This is also cute, that outfit. All of this, just all of those frames here. Super, super cute. Even that here, look at that little detail. As he lays here, look at this. Just that little bit of a shrug that's also in the hands here. And if someone leans back here, watch the knee. There's still the influence in the legs as the body goes back and you got an adjustment in the chest. This goes all the way down to the hips. And if you do something in the hips and you have a slight weight and balance adjustment, it's going to go all the way through the body. All the little details you got to pay attention to. Super cute. Of course, I'm going to be super picky. And on that arm move, I'm going to be like a backseat critiquer. I'm going to put a little bit more in that chest. Oh, I know a critique. I know. But this is what I'm talking about to students, so it's kind of fun. I always like when you, when you also don't see it, because if you watch that shot, right, let's look at it again, it still works. So you don't always have to put it in there, and you still have enough keep alive. And the root movement, what the arm is doing, it's really cute. Slightly, slightly more, come on, slightly more. That is great, look at that contrast, I love this. And you got your arm, look at that pose. So nice, I love the twist in the body. Got that drop and you got the compression in the head with the hair as well. Then you got this, the change. It's not a repeated pose with the arms out. 
it goes in. Then you have that slight change over there. And then, whoa, with a slight off balance. And then back into it with the lean forward. Beautiful. Come on. It's so good. Watch this again. It's not super long, but it's nice and complex. I always tell the students not to go one axis. You got to give this a little bit more contrast, but also a bit more in control, less in control. So that path is steadier versus that one. It's super cute. I love all this. Again, goes back into the silhouette. You can do a broader mechanic shot with really pushed posing. You got still got that stretch and then compression there. So good. And because it is on a slope for balance, you can see the lean back of the character here. Oh, so good. Talk about balance here. Let's watch this. <laughs> so cute. Just the bounciness and the springiness of the characters. And again, contrast. You got arms out like that come in, but they're not twins. You got one arm that's still out there for a twist and swing out there and then back out where they work together and then out with one arm here. It's just every frame is so good. So good. I love all this. <laughs> Look at that. I love the hair bounciness. I know this is one of those. Are you really looking at this and analyzing it or are you just going, oh, this is so cool. It is. It is a bit of both. Hence the title analysis and reaction. I love stuff like this, I gotta say. When you have sets like these, right? And it's slightly slippery, could be rock stuff, could be a little sandy, whatever you have. But you can see that, that's the stuff that I love. When you have characters interacting with surfaces and it's up to you as the animator to tell us what this surface is. Is it sticky? Is it sliding? Is it on fire? Whatever it is, and, and the character will react to that. But again, such a good shot in terms of silhouette. Look at that, pushing the pose. Full extension on the leg, really nice line of action pushed into this. It's so good. And again, the contrast of the characters. This guy is super comfortable. Yay! Versus this one, not so much. And it's also neat because, as you can see, as the body moves, now you got a bit more blur here. Super blurry because it's, it's a big, fast move, but you do want to read the face in terms of, I don't know about that. So then you have less movement in the head, which means no blur and then you can still read the facial expression. But just as an exercise too, it's not long, watch this. It's short, but it's cool. That's what I tell the students, keep it short so you can finish it and push it. I would probably go a bit longer for an assignment, just a bit, because you could have fun with the actual drop and maybe a, uh, he stops a bit and goes, whoa, a little bit forward move for more weight, just as an assignment to continue. But I think this would be a great example. It's uneven terrain. It's not a flat surface. Contrasting characters and interaction on the surface. It's so great. <laughs> that's cute too. It's all so cute. I mean, that's to me the basic feeling of this trailer. All of all this. I know I'm always looking at even that little bend in the overall foot for that. You can see this here in the feet. You got a bit of a tiny, tiny squash there. I love it. Here, splaying, spreading of the toes. Even here, as you adjust the weight shift, it's tiny, but it's there. I love it when they take time to put all those details and starting to get into multiples here. It's so cute. I mean, everything about this to me is so cute. Then you got your really nice line of action within the head. Your twisted nose. That. I love those really appealing, clean mouth shapes and those thick, like, you know, it's like a big layer of, of skin here where it's not super thin. I know this is so up my alley. I love this. That pushed over. So cute. You can see that how much that shape goes over. Woo! Super clean. I love all this. I'm going to go in there afterwards again. Let's go frame by frame and check it all out. Yeah, it's so great. Here's the other mechanic shot, right? As you see this here, it doesn't always have to be the character doing you know, the, the running or the walking. It could be on a vehicle and that will give you again bounciness. And you can see here to push off all the craziness here. And that would be a really fun shot too. Again, that with the speed, uneven terrain, 
contrasting curve. He's leaning forward, leaning towards the danger in action, and he's just holding on. Ah, so good. It's so cute. I love it. Let's watch this again. Even that little, that little bump at the end there. All right. Boop. That's great. So good. I mean, come on. It's a Pixar TV trailer. Pixar work is going to be always great. A bit of a high frequency shake in the camera. <laughs> so good. No way. I didn't even notice this. It's a turtle. <laughs> oh, that poor guy. Oh, so cute. Prop animation. This would be a shot I would love to do. You can see this here too before they arrive. You got that little bit of movement in there, right? Because it has to move. It's contacting here. So cute. The wheel still turning. I love the unevenness of the wheel too. It's not in one axis, right? It turns around. Come on. So good. Again, toe play. It's just so cute. <laughs> nice little bit of a shirt. <laughs> Even here, you can see the corners of the arcs going in. You can see how that shape goes, whoa, and then down for, wow. So cute. Because it's not just dialing in, I mean, like a shape that's this and the shape out like that. You still have to think about what is the arc. I mean, you know, not that you have that much of a corner because they're so round, but you still feel there's an arc in it. There's a change in the jaw. There is a slight stretchiness in the face as the jaw goes down. It will stretch all of this. You can even see it all through here. If you put this on the wireframe on shaded, you would see uh, the the shading, the lines here. They will all get pulled down. Everything gets pushed. All the shapes, just an elongation and stretching of the face. So I think I talked about that yesterday morning in the Q&A too. It's really great. It's so cute. You can see all the detail. That's just like one of the best shots you can you can look at in terms of detail and it's slow motion. You get to see all the little details, all the changes in the bend of the foot. And even here you got rid of eye darts. And now that it's slow motion, it's still dirty. It's great. And you can see how long it takes for frames, uh, for uh, I <laughs> frames for blinks. Still, it's not robotic. Yeah, gotta ease in, hold a bit, get that fleshiness when you go out and just ease into that. I mean, obviously it depends on all the, you know, the uh, the shot and what the character is doing. Oh, we always talk about that in class too. Half blinks, doesn't always have to be a full blink. You can absolutely do that. You can see the staggered overlay lids and then the brows. It's like the lids gonna push up the brows after that. It's a slight delay there. It's great. Warrant. So good. Even something like that. You gotta go frame by frame and see what they do. You still gotta have something in there. And if something like that's more static, the hair is gonna help to not make it look like a 2D card. You got lots of movement here. And then, ready. But this seems to be also another shot because you can see they are on their vehicle. And no. Because as they're in here, unless the vehicle comes up afterwards and that's a different cut. I love the look here. Whenever there's water like this, reminds me of Wind Waker. Any Zelda fans out there? Come on. And then we get into this and the big reveal. It's great pose already. Come on. <laughs> nice bend. Nice bend there. Oh, look at that. So good. Funny enough, that's a great reference. So I wanted to do a shot with a character. I'm not going to say what it is right now, but I wanted to do this. I wanted to do exactly that. You see the water line and what's above and below here in terms of something that you see and then there's stuff happening and I'll, I'll do that i did some animating at home again a couple things i want to do in that shot is on my list and also adding little effects and bubbles and things all that stuff i want to do but also the feeling of you are outside i mean my character is going to be on a boat falling over but just the physics of you're on something hard and it's you know gravity blah 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 in the air versus underwater how the body is changing and moving differently that's something actually I've never animated and that's why I want to do it. Change that. And now you get to see at this nice little bend bows. Look at that twist in the body. And then the I hate tails. I hate 
animating tails. This is great. <laughs> I'll look at this and go, oh no, what a nightmare. At least it's not too long, but oh, great face, like that little, little fuzz there. I just love those designs. They're so cute. There's something about the roundness and stubbiness of the hands, and the fingers. <laughs> those stairs, so good. Let me just look at so cute. Little darts there. Soupy. If you start somewhere at the company, it's probably your shot there. All right, here, get used to the pipeline. A couple darts. <laughs> and then make the shot ready for renders. <laughs> Look at those designs. It's crazy town. Cute to all of this. I love that how this is up so it supports the weight of the bag so it doesn't slide down just enough to hold this. Got a nice offset pose here in the fingers with the thumb up. I'm looking at these all the time. Just, I love just tweaking finger and hand poses. It's so great to see. Again, the contrast, right? This guy, when his bike is all crazy, same thing here with his what he's doing while this character is a bit more reserved. <laughs> I love this here. That's why I wanted to frame through. And you can see the transformation into, oh, cute. Look at that. You got the toes going first into that. It's almost like the hair bing, goes out for an extra little accent. <laughs> so cute. And I love that it holds the pose into that. So cute. And again, the underwater thing. Not that I'm going to do water sim stuff, but I just want to do this. I want to do the change and seeing that water line and the bubbles. <laughs> it's really great. It's a good shot for path. As you have a character, you know, jumping, flowing, flying, whatever. Think about draw that path. I mean, you should technically, actually, we just talked about that yesterday night. Someone's going to animate a dragon flying up to a tower. And uh, talking about if this is, you know, your main controller and we have what we call like a flight con or whatever. It could be a controller, what we have here that moves the feet as well. So you don't want to do just the root and then the IK feet are stuck here and you got to readjust each frame. This would be like an overall controller. I mean, that's what I would do. Uh, moving the whole character so that the feet go with it. And if you don't have that on a motion path, I would still recommend that you draw just like that a NURBS curve. And like properly, not that like in this view it's fine, but then from the other view it's doing something crazy. Make it proper in the actual 3D view. And then if you don't want to put it on the path, at least you have a guide. And then you can put your character along that path. And as it does this, you can see that the body line and the feet and everything, the legs, they follow that path for a nice smooth action. That's what I would technically recommend if you're doing a creature flying or something like that and you don't want to put on the motion path. I'm, to be honest, not a massive fan of the motion path. The built-in one in Maya, we have a really great flight tool uh, at work. So cute though. I love the hole too. When you look at this here, and then a slight acceleration at the end there. Super cute. Oh no, it's already done. There's a little bit of thing at the end, but oh man, I could watch this forever. I can't wait for this movie. <laughs> I always like that too. I'm a massive fan of reveals. I think I've done a few shots. Actually, I'm doing one again where it's a bit of a reveal. And this to me is always, what if you have, imagine this is your name when you're real, right? It's your name, character animator, and the year. I always put the year on there so we know how old that real is. And then this kind of blends in. The names could still be here, fades out. And then, shabam! That's the beginning of your shot, revealing. Then something super cute. I mean, this is already great. This could be such a great first shot for your reel. Nice little wobble there on the camera too. Also cool that in all of this, you can see this as it reveals the face. I love the drag too, by the way. If it's off of here. And immediately reveals the face and see the eyes get into focus. And look at that. Because we do want to see that face. Now we're seeing oh, the shocked face. And on that frame, look at that. We're not completely covering the eyes. Except here. And then they're back. And then the second reveal there. Because you never really miss it. Even if there's one frame covering the eyes, it's fine. So great, slight little dart there. So good. Every frame you can go in there. <laughs> Such a great idea, whatever this water contact. So cute. Look at that anticipation for that take. It's great. Offset, grouped fingers. So cute. 
this is for me sorry i'm looking at this for myself you look at that the squishing of the face you can see how that shape is changing here you got almost the eyebrows pushing this whole thing up and then that lean this way it's great what i love about this too is that this happens right if you watch stuff there's the uh, the slow-mo guys i think it's called it's really neat when you see stuff hitting people's faces the face does not react right away it's going to take a while I like that the the lighter softer part is moving first before this and then you got that and it's also a visceral reaction of oh it's not <clears throat> you would have this where you got eye darts and looking and processing information it's an immediate body physical reaction so the shoulders do go up love that nice line here look at that asymmetry it's great so cute i love all that <laughs> then his face there and again you got the squash and the stretch you can see how much it's changing you can see a widening here and gets into something slightly narrower you can see the change the squishiness in the face and all of that bit of a softer move is technically different material and built you know versus the softer bit lighter material so the animation is going to be slightly different here love that that detail also love that little drop here Love the hide and get not completely hiding that eye, so you can still get the shocked face in there. It's oh, great. It's just so great. Which I know is kind of the summary of all my trail analysis things. So great, so great. But it is. It really is. And even stuff like that, when you go just over a couple of frames, what have they done? What are the details? How do you settle into this? What's the bounciness? A little bit of squash and stretch in the head, just a bit. Just has enough squishiness you can see. The structure of that head, how it changes. And then you got a bit of a lead on the on the uh, eyebrows, whoop, going into that. Don't forget shoulders. Actually, it's something else I told the students yesterday. Don't forget shoulders. It's a nice little one frame pop there. Look at that. Whoop. That little bounciness. Just do enough. Don't forget shoulders. They're kind of like the eyebrows of bodies, I would say. <laughs> I don't know if that, if that is a cheesy expression, but. You can do a lot. This reminds me of uh, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Eyebrows and no eyes. At one point, the eyes would go up. I love that this guy has a, a mustache too. It's great. It's this here. Because I'm looking at prop interaction. Again, fingers, props, I love all this. What was done. It's a nice little side roll. So it's not like a constrained pop into this. It has a slight. Because you put the fingers on there. And you can see how there are more fingers here, obviously, than the one finger, the thumb here. So there's more pressure and the slight we can see with this there's a rotation this way so the the glass has to roll this way for the pickup it's a tiny detail but i love it absolutely love it nice again finger pose love this here kind of you know telling us how the arms are together here in that pose so cute a little change there in the jaw i know these are all super tiny details like skin here going off right here for that smile but again any students watching this that's what you got to do once you go in there for the final polish all those little details again contrast in structure and posing like the whole face is wider the hair everything is wider where this guy is narrower the face the hair everything is just slightly different i love that even that glass is slightly offset and cartoony you know what i mean it's not like this photo real clean rectangular whatever you know round whatever shape it has just enough of an offset. Oh, and then that's it. That's a bummer. I could watch this all day. Anyway, speaking of which, you have watched this all with me all day now. So that is that. There you go. Teaser for Luca. I love this. And if you like what you saw, you know the pitches is YouTube. It's the end. I do all kinds of analysis clips here. I'll put these at the end and in the cards. So feel free to browse around my channel. Subscribe if you want. I know it's actually self-serving. Like and subscribe. But that's what you do on this channel, right? You say like and subscribe. So do if you want. Hit that bell button. And that is it. Thank you for watching.